For those of you who are taking thesis seminar, wanted to share with you an observation sheet format that you might consider. Many of you are observing classes and will want to use an instrument to capture as much information as possible uh, for your observations. And so one way that you can do this is to use a similar format that I've shown here where you begin at the top with some general information. So you can include the date, maybe the name of the school or institution or business. You might include the name or names of the participants, per, for example, maybe the teacher's name, perhaps even the group or level of the particular group. You may decide to include more general information as it pertains to your study. This is just an example, but you can use uh, this as, uh, as a starting point. And then below the general information that will be specific to each of the observation sheets, again, you'll probably have an observation sheet per uh, per lesson. So below you'll have subdivided into sections the different parts of a, of, of a class. So for example, let's say that you begin observing, you can indicate the time frame, let's say 8 o'clock in the morning to 8.05, uh, the teacher called roll. Okay, so you could have something like this where you have a range. It's important here at this point to have a starting uh, starting uh, hour uh, and and then an ending point okay so that you can see at a glance how long this particular activity took place here you're going to have some sort of description of or a category and uh, you can create the category in on in real time during the observation or you can come back later after the observation and assign this a particular category the categories are going to depend very much on your research questions, so uh, keep that in mind. Below then you'll have a description, and here this is where you're going to conduct your observation. You're going to observe what the teacher says, for example, what the teacher does, maybe what the, te the students do or what the students say. And here you're just going to recall and note all the information that you can observe in real time. Now here, this is where you can also choose to record the, the class, whether it's a video recording or maybe just an audio recording. This will help you complement this rich description that you need to include here. Remember that you're not going to judge or evaluate or analyze the information at this point. You're just trying to recall as much information as possible. Later, once you have this description, then you can select parts of the text and maybe add what's called an analytic memo or a reflective note where you're going to offer some sort of analysis or reflection on what you saw. So here this could be anything. This could be something related to your research questions. This could be also notes to yourself for follow-up. So you might say something like interview participant about this. All right? So maybe you observe something in class that you later think, well, this would be good to interview and discuss this with the, with the teacher in, the, in this case. And so here, this is a good tool that will allow you to both include the description, the observation itself, along with analytic memos. Then you continue on after you observe the first activity. Typically, then the class will go into some sort of uh, other type of activity or maybe part of a lesson. Maybe the teacher is presenting new information to the class. Maybe the teacher is giving instructions. You subdivide the class into these parts where you're accounting for the time frame. You're going to assign it a category and you're going to provide as much description as possible. Again, the descriptions, you're going to be primarily just writing or typing out everything that you see continually as the class unfolds. When you finish, then you should have for any particular lesson or class, you should have some sort of division that looks something like this. Now this is where I think it would be easier to do it on some sort of electronic device, whether it's your phone or computer or laptop. That way you can uh, use the space, however much space you need for each of these. It's hard to know at the beginning how much space to allow for this if you're going to print this out. Um, so, you know, do whatever is uh, easiest to 
uh, for your for your particular context but make sure that when you finish that you have this information and again I like this format because you can look at it not only to see the order in which certain types of activities take place within a lesson but you can also see how long this takes place again you can assign a category to it and um, the descriptions itself you can code and which we can discuss later but you can actually uh, code your descriptions and uh, which will be part of your overall analysis uh, later on. So uh, this is an example of an observation sheet. If you find another observation sheet that serves your purpose uh, better, certainly that is fine. I just wanted to provide here an example of, of a sheet that you can use. It is a good idea though to use some sort of format or instrument that, uh, that will help you facilitate the observation process and obviously this instrument you will reference later in your method section in your thesis paper. If you do have any questions or need further clarification, feel free to email me or come by my office. Certainly we can also discuss this in our one-on-one -on -one tutoring sessions.